But throughout this journey of ups and downs, um, you, you have stayed together, you've been resilient, and you came to the conclusion that the right solution for you was a surrogate. What made you ultimately decide this? Josh and I have always been very open about uh, you know, adoption or trying surrogacy. You know, it was something always in the back of my mind, uh, but it wasn't until that loss that I started thinking we might need to shift gears. And then ultimately, we decided that we would pursue surrogacy. When you found your surrogate, was there a relief that finally we are actually on our way here? Yes. Uh, when we met, and hugged i just felt like now we were going to have someone running this marathon with us and it felt um a huge sense of relief um and it felt like we were finally maybe getting to the top of this this hill that we've been climbing for so long coming up we'll have more with natalie and josh and how everything changed after the lockdown We're back with Natalie and Josh, who have spent more than a decade trying to become parents. But since the coronavirus pandemic, their surrogacy plans have been put on hold indefinitely. Natalie, before the break, you were explaining how you'd found your surrogate, bonded with her, and then everything came to a screeching halt. When did you learn? How did you learn you would not be able to proceed? We, she had just had her medical clearance in March um, and we were really excited about all the next steps. We had been talking about it, planning. Um, she got the call from the clinic telling her that she had class medical clearance and that we would have to put a pause on the transfer because at that time um, that's when states started closing down and non-essential work were um, to close as well. Josh, did you have any idea that your procedure was considered non-essential? Um, no. <laughs> I mean, it's it's essential to us, uh, but um, but I it never you know this kind. There are so many things I think that have been happening during during this crazy thing that's happening right now that never occurred to people, right? And this is, you know, one of probably thousands of things that I think not only that we are dealing with, but that, you know, lots of people are dealing with that suddenly you realize, oh, oh yeah, I guess, I guess it makes sense. Like we can't, we can't for safety's sake move forward, you know, it's, and you have to try to not be selfish about it and try to think about the greater good and just think like, you know, luckily we're working with somebody who, you know, really is, is in it and, and is really supportive and has expressed to us that she's willing to wait. She's willing to wait. So what have your doctors told you timeline wise? Can they commit to anything at this point? Right now, um, as far as this week, actually, a lot of clinics are starting to get up to speed with retrieval and transfers right now. Um, it is case by case basis, and there are a lot of factors involved in terms of how they're going to move forward and with which cases they're going to move forward with. Um, those patients who need to be on immunosuppressants like prednisone or Medrol to prevent their bodies from rejecting the embryo. I'm not sure where those cases are going to stand right now. And we okay. have heard where they are in terms of using those meds and when they would even start 